we were there. The least of you will become a thousand, the smallest, a mighty nation. I am the Lord, and it's time I will do this swiftly. How many of you know that God is a God of growth and multiplication? Amen. And we're believing God not only to double, but to increase in number here. And, and, and we're standing on the Word of God, and God can do it swiftly. Amen. And uh, how many of you know we've been increasing already? It's very exciting. And we're also believing for eagles, right? Amen. You say, well, what is an eagle? Well, I'm glad you asked. Go to the next scripture. Matthew 13, 31. Another story. God's kingdom is like a pine nut that a farmer plants. It is quite small as seeds go, but in the course of years, it grows into a huge pine tree, and eagles build nests in it. Amen. We're believing God for eagles, uh, people who represent uh, leadership, uh, people of influence coming in and building their nest here. Amen. And we're also believing God for raising up eagles among us, right? Hey, you might be a turkey right now, but God wants to make you an eagle. Amen. Amen. And you, you wouldn't want to be a turkey around Thanksgiving. I saw some very, very funny, very funny posts on uh, Facebook <laughs> about the turkeys. It was pretty funny. So anyhow, do y'all have a good Thanksgiving? Yes. Amen. I know we did. We had, um, we had some awesome food, awesome fellowship. Amen. And we always play that catchphrase. Like, it's like we just, we got to play it, and then we start playing it, and it just gets all crazy. But anyhow, we had a lot of fun. So also, uh, let's go over... Um, Let's go over uh, what our mission is here at Forgiven Church. Our mission here at Forgiven Church is to love God, to love others, and to discover and develop the greatness that's within each one of us. Amen. How many of you know there's greatness inside of you? Amen. Amen. And there's greatness that's being discovered and developed all the time. How many of you know you never stop growing, you never stop reaching your potential as long as you're on this earth? Amen. 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 All right. Well, we got an exciting minister lined up to minister the word to you. But before we do that, let's go ahead and do our faith quote. Are you guys excited about the word? Yeah. Amen. If you have a Bible, an iPod, whatever you got your Bible on, if you would stand, hold it up and say this with me. Say, this is my Bible and I believe it was written for me to understand and agree with. I am what it says I am, set free from all the power of the enemy. I will do what it says to do, and I will see that it is reality. Can you say amen? Amen. 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 All right. Well, we have, uh, you all may be seated. We have Brother Nick Poe uh, in the house with us today. Uh, he is just an awesome, awesome man, just, just a great friend. Brother Nick Poe, he came and ministered last year. I think it was last year, wasn't it? Uh, him and his wife, Laura, and now they have a little, little one, Pippi. Uh, Pippi, sorry about that. And uh, cute little, little one. So, yeah, very, and, and they couldn't be with us today, but uh, our, uh, if you're watching online, we love you, uh, miss you, and look forward to seeing you soon. Uh, Brother Nick, he grew up in the church. You were in the church most all your life. Uh, and, and he's done it all. I'll tell you what, he's worn all the hats. Uh, if you do it, he's probably done it. He is an awesome example of a person who's just been faithful to God all these years. And he has moved into uh, an evangelistic calling. And he has also, um, uh, a minister had asked you to transcribe a sermon for him and put it in book format. So he, he was uh, faithful to do that. And God gave him... Uh, an idea to, to start his own business. And so he is actually the founder of uh, Tall Pine Books. And so he, that is a very powerful ministry tool from pulpit to page. Amen. That's awesome. And so uh, business doing good. Amen. And so uh, let's just all give him a very well warm welcome as he comes up. Brother Nick Poe. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Amen. Hallelujah. Can you hear me okay? Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, it's good to be with you again. I think it's the third or fourth time I've been here, so I feel like we're getting to know each other pretty well. I tell people, whenever I preach somewhere the first time, it's like an awkward first date, but then you just start to get comfortable with each other and you warm right up. But uh, yeah, Laura and Pippi are back home this morning. Pippi, we were at the doctor yesterday. She had an ear infection. It's got a 101.5 fever. 
So three hours of driving and two services, we figured we'd just be pushing it today. So uh, she's back home catching a healing in Jesus' name. So if you think of it this afternoon, just uh, give her a prayer. But nevertheless, uh, Laura sends her greetings. She loves you, and, and we love being here. And this morning, I've got a message for you I, I hope is going to be clear and concise, and I'm really honored to share it. I, I love your pastors and honor them and celebrate them. It's really nice when leadership gets to just take a minute and be refreshed. Amen. They need to be filled before they pour out. Amen. And I don't know of a better way to be filled than to do it on a cruise ship. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. But that's awesome for them, and I'm really blessed and, and honored to be able to share their pulpit this morning. I've got a message for you called Getting Ready for More, or Making Room for More. And I believe that if you want it to be, it will be a timely word for you and for your life. And, and you know, the reason <clears throat> I'm sharing this message called Making Room for More is because I believe that God is a God of increase, He's a God of expansion. He's a God of multiplication, Amen. He's a God of upgrades, and He's a God of promotion. Yeah. Amen? Amen? But oftentimes, and you'll know this, there is a process, everybody say process. process. There's a process that precedes the promotion. Often there's a positioning that precedes provision. In other words, there's I's to dot, there's T's to cross, there's steps to climb, there's positioning that needs to happen in order for us to receive that which God wants to bring about in the new season. Amen? Amen. Preparation is very important. And many people are just floating through Christian life, essentially just waiting for God to do the next thing or waiting for God to do the new thing without preparing themselves for what God actually wants to do. And I believe that in 2020, you could have the greatest year of your life, you could have more increase, more expansion, more growth, better relationships, a better year of marriage, a better year with your children, a better year at work than you've ever had in this entire past decade. But much of it depends on our willingness to say, yes, Lord, I receive the fullness of what you have for me. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Oftentimes we look at the lives of other people and we say, man, I want that couple's marriage or I want that person's joy. Or I see this person over here who's really peaceful during the trials of life. I want their peace. How many of you looked at somebody before and you said, man, they're a good example. I want what they have. And I would encourage you, if somebody has something that you want, find out if they gave something up that you're still holding on to. Find out if they shed old skin that you're still wearing. Find out if they went through a process and paid a price that you might not be willing to pay. Because I promise you the provision, the blessing, the fullness that they're walking in, often it comes at a price. In fact, I remember hearing a story of, of, of a church service where there was this old preacher on the platform who was experienced, he was wise, he was seasoned, he had spent time with God, he had walked with God, and he was up on the platform sitting next to a young preacher who was inexperienced, a new convert, probably had no business having the microphone in his hand, frankly, but he's, he's, he's green on every level. And they're both sitting there on the platform, and both of them are going to share in this service and the young preacher stands up and grabs the microphone opens his bible to psalm 23 and with a loud voice he begins to declare the lord is my shepherd i shall not want he leads me beside still waters and he goes through the entire psalm and and shouts it and decrees it uses all the right inflection and gives it his all but nobody's really responding Nobody's really receptive. Maybe a couple hallelujahs, but that's about it. And all he was doing was just replicating what he had seen other preachers do. He wasn't speaking from a place of revelation. He was speaking from a place of replication. And so there was really no receptivity in the crowd. So he sits back down and the old preacher who was seasoned, who had walked with God, kind of limps his way to the pulpit, opens his Bible to Psalm 23, and with a calm, still Easy going voice, he just begins to read, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures, he leads me beside still waters, and he goes through this psalm in a calm manner, and like popcorn all around the room, people begin to start weeping. They begin to get touched, and God himself shows up. And by the time he finishes this psalm, there's not a dry eye in the room. And he goes back down and sits next to the young preacher, and that young preacher looks at him with his jaw on the floor, 
and says, how did you do that? And the old preacher looked at him and said, son, you know the psalm, but I know the shepherd. Amen. The old man had a, had a, a manifestation that the young one didn't because he paid a price that the young one hadn't. And oftentimes, I believe we will shortcut and short circuit God's process and God's blessing because we fail to pay the price and to position ourselves properly to receive the fullness of what God has for us. And I believe, I'm going to give you three points this morning real quick. I believe in 2020, God will position you and prepare you to receive the fullness of this next season. So if you would, go to Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9, Jesus speaks to these very principles, the, the, the next season and the new move of God. <clears throat> My point number one is this, God prepares you in the now season to receive promotion in the next season. And here's what Jesus has to say about that. Matthew chapter 9 and verse 16, he says, No one puts a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, for the patch pulls away from the garment and the tear is made worse. Nor do they put new wine into old wineskins, or else the wineskin breaks, wine is spilled, and wineskins are ruined. But they put new wine into the new wineskins, and both are preserved. Back in that day and age, they didn't go to Target and get a plastic water bottle or a metal tumbler to contain their water. They used animal skins. And when you put wine into a leather animal skin, it would stretch out and the fermentation would cause it to expand, which was fine for just that one bottle of, of wine. But once they used it and drank it out or poured it all out, that empty wineskin got stretched to the point that it became brittle. And so if you tried to pour in a bunch of new wine into that wineskin, it would break and burst, and both the wine and the wineskin would be ruined. And what Jesus is saying here is, I want to upgrade your container. I want to position you so that you can handle exactly what I want to do for you, in you, to you, and through you in this next season. Amen? A lot of people want God to bless them, but if he blessed them, it would break them. So God will build you before he blesses you. Amen. He'll give you the resources you need to handle the blessing for when it comes. I believe the earth that we live in is not a waiting room for heaven. It's a landing strip for heaven. But a lot of people haven't built a runway. They say, God, show up in my life, but there's no room for God to land in their life. Sunday morning for one hour isn't enough time for God to land in your life the way he really wants to. Amen? Amen. There's got to be a revelation that happens where we take the corporate public place of worship and let it bring us into the private place of intimacy in the secret place with Jesus. Amen? Amen. And I believe the Lord often is not tipping the bottle pouring into our lives because there's an old wineskin. See, many people have a desire. Everybody say desire. desire. They have desire that outweighs their capacity. How many of you have seen a person before who's a broken mess who says, man, I just want to be married so bad? Yeah. Yeah. That's a desire that's outweighing their capacity. Because you think to yourself, well, if God gives you a spouse, God have mercy on that spouse. Yeah. Amen? Right. Or someone says, man, I, just, I, just, I, need, I need a new home. But they don't have the finances to manage that home. They'd end up losing the home to begin with. They have a desire. They say, Lord, I want more but they don't have the capacity to handle it. They're asking God for a gallon. They only have room for an ounce. Whereas God wants to, like he said through the prayer of Jabez, wants us to expand our borders, expand our capacity, so that as we're faithful with the little, he'll make us ruler over much and cause us to step into the fullness of what he has for us. Amen? Amen. I remember my dad in high school sat me down. It was, it was kind of a, a practical story of what I'm talking about here. I had this old beat-up car that uh, had red uh, cloth interior, automatic seat belts that didn't work, and smoke would blow out of the heater when I turned it on. It was just a, a rough car. It was a piece of work. I'll call, I'll call it that. It was a piece of work. And <clears throat> I remember treating it like a piece of work. I just treated this thing really bad. I, I, I trashed it. I didn't care for it. And it was just a mess, trash in the floorboards. And my dad saw it one day. And he sat me down like a loving father and he said, hey, I uh, saw your car, and it's a disaster. It's a mess. And I'm like, it's a good observation, Pops. And he said, uh, he said, you know, that's bad stewardship. Why would God give you an upgraded vehicle or a newer vehicle or a nicer vehicle if you treat your current one that way? 
So I repented, and the fruit of my repentance was I cleaned out my car. But that lesson stuck with me ever since. And I will say this, if you're a parent with children, I think God kind of winks at that messy car. I think he gives you a little extra grace. <laughs> and all the parents said, amen. amen. <clears throat> it's amazing. I'll clean out the car and make it spotless two days later. We only have one kid. Two days later, I'm knee deep in bottles and binkies and blankets and snacks and Anyways, I remember my dad telling me that, and he said, Nick, there's a landlord that I know who rents apartments out to, to tenants, and when he wants to rent an apartment out to a tenant, he doesn't do a credit check, he doesn't do referrals, he doesn't do background check, he doesn't do any of that. You know what he does? He looks at their car. And if he sees their car is a mess, he knows how his apartment's going to look. If he sees their car is spotless, he knows his apartment will be cared for and will be spotless. That's how he makes his decisions. Now, that's just a simple, practical decision. I know you're going to race out of here and go clean your car right when you get home. <laughs> but there's just this, on a bigger scale, there's this principle that if we neglect that which God has given us in our current season, we don't qualify ourselves to receive the upgrade or the promotion. Yeah. Amen? Amen? For Jesus declared, those who are faithful over the little will be made ruler over much. You can't get to the much by bypassing the little. Yeah. Amen? Amen? I just believe these things are so. Point number two, I have more to say on that topic. We'll get to point number two right now. Point number two for increasing and making room for more is this, and you'll know this to be true. Give it an amen if you agree with it. The only right timing is God's timing. Amen. A lot of people know what to do, but they don't know when to do it. They know what God has for them, they don't know when God wants to manifest it in their lives. Here's an example. Somebody says, um, you know, I've been renting, and I believe God wants to give me a house. I, I, be, I believe in prayer. I heard God wants me to have a house so I can build equity and make, make this place a home. And, and, and so then they go out looking for homes, which is exciting, and then they, they, they fall in love with the first thing they find. It's got the right amount of bedrooms, the right bathrooms, the right school district. But despite the fact that they feel uneasy in their stomach and not have any peace about the situation, they move forward any, anyways because they said, God, I know what you want from me, but I'm going to ignore the timing of what, when you want it from me, and they end up in a whole mess to begin with. How many of you have seen people who have said, I know God wants me to be married, so then they just fall in love with the first person who shows them any affection whatsoever? And it's a recipe for disaster because God doesn't just have a what, he has a when. And you have to be able to spot when the season's shifting, when God is manifesting something. I remember reading in Genesis chapter 1 where God said he gave the sun to rule by day and the moon to rule by night. And I've read that, and this is a little bit intricate, so hang with me. But I read that and I thought to myself, Lord, why is it that you said the sun will rule the day? You could have said I gave the sun to come out at day and the moon to come out at night. But he said, I gave the sun to rule the day. Yeah. I thought, why is that? I believe the Lord spoke to me and said, it's because the sun determines when the day starts and when the day ends. Mm -hmm. Rulership, leadership, maturity, authority is about knowing when a season starts and when a season stops. Amen. Amen. It's about knowing when to go and when to hold back. And I believe that God wants to do amazing things, profound things in your business, in your marriage, in your relationships, in your finances, in your life as a whole. There's no area that's left untouched, but you've got to be keen with your ear turned toward heaven so you know not just what God wants to do, but when he wants to do it. Amen. Amen. I, I worked on staff like um, Merlin alluded, alluded to. I worked on staff at New Life for, for about five years and, you know, I, I, I knew before I ever started working at New Life at a local church that I would eventually do full-time evangelistic ministry, kind of run our own thing. But I also knew that I needed this season of preparation on staff at New Life. And so there were times three or four years in where the, the you know, ministry pay isn't good. It's not, you, don't, you don't get into ministry for the money. The, the job got to be a grind at times where you're working long hours and you're caring for people and you're always on. There's always hospital visits and funerals and weekend plans get crashed. And, and it, it got to be a grind at certain times. But I knew if I left that incubator, that season prematurely, 
And I didn't know the timing of God. And I tried to run my own ministry by myself before properly launching in the timing of God. I would run myself right into the ground really quick. And I remember praying and I prayed. I said, Lord, I feel stuck. And he said, you're not stuck, you're planted. And the difference is, if you're stuck, it means you're somewhere you shouldn't be. If you're planted, you're planted there by a force that's greater than you, in ground that's bigger than you, so you can find and get nutrients that cause you to flourish in the place that God has called you. Amen? Amen. So I said, all right, I'm planted. And I just stayed faithful over that season. And then God launched us out just at the right time with our pastor's blessing with God's blessing. We had heard from him in prayer and it just made sense. Amen? Amen. When the timing is right, I'm telling you, it changes everything. Because the right thing at the wrong time is still the wrong thing. Don't miss that. Don't miss that in Jesus' name. Amen? I remember uh, there was a young man in my hometown who uh, wanted to be married really bad and he, 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 he loved Jesus, but he found this girl that he wanted to marry. On paper, things looked good, but he just knew in his spirit something wasn't right. Something was uneasy, and he's trying to, he was praying and sort of trying to convince God to change his mind. Have you ever done that? <laughs> you like, you give, you're, you become an attorney for yourself. You know, you represent yourself to the Lord, and you, you give your best case as why you should be able to do what you want to do. And so he's giving his case to the Lord and asking if, if he has God's blessing in marrying this girl. And, uh, <clears throat> God spoke to him, and he said, son, what have you asked of me? What have you asked me for? And so this guy just began to recite to God his prayer life over the past year. He said, Lord, I've told you that I want to know you more. I've asked to be a passionate lover of you. I've asked to win souls. I've asked to serve in my church. I've asked to be a better man. He he goes through this whole list and gets done with the list, and God says, okay, if I allowed you to marry her, it would compromise everything that you've asked of me. In other words, if I answer this one prayer, it's going to cut the legs out of all these other prayers. Sometimes when the answer is no, it's because a yes would destroy you. And vice versa, sometimes when the answer is yes, it's because a no would destroy you. Sometimes we delay when God says go. Sometimes we go when God says, pull back. But if we'll walk in step with the Son of God, Jesus Christ himself, we won't miss the timing because God is always on time, and he'll see to it that you are too. Amen. Acts 17 says God has appointed, pre-appointed times and boundaries for your life. Amen. Amen. In season and out of season, God will always be on time every time and manifest himself just as you need it. Amen. So point number one, as we make room for more in 2020, is God prepares you in the now season to receive promotion in the next season. Number two, just recapping here, the only right timing is God's timing. Point number three, God doesn't just want to change our stuff. He wants to change us. Amen. You know, it's tempting as we look at the Bible and we go through our Christian life, it's really tempting to just make it all about things, to make it all about circumstances, to make it all about the external. But how many of you know the priority of God, that which is primary to God, is your heart? Yes. Right. If he can change your heart, he can change your stuff. Yeah. Think about uh, Israel. Israel's in captivity in Egypt. God delivers them out of captivity. But he doesn't want to just change their circumstances. He wants to to change their heart. People say it like this. Preachers have this catchphrase. They say you can take Israel out of Egypt, but you need to get Egypt out of Israel. Did I say that right? I think I did. There's this reality that God doesn't want to just change your location, change your circumstances, and upgrade your surroundings. He wants to upgrade you as a person, first and foremost. Israel comes out of Egypt, and Moses goes to the mountain to meet with God. And, Egypt, and Israel goes, uh, well, Moses is up there, you know, connecting with God. We got to worship something. So why don't we make a golden calf for ourselves? Because, you know, in, in the absence of Jesus, you're going to worship something or someone. 
you're going to find something to bow down to. Some people say, well, I don't, I'm an atheist. I don't serve any God. I'm telling you, atheism is a religion. <laughs> it's a doctrine. It's a line of believing. You're bowing to something. You're submitting to someone. So you can't, there is no place of neutrality. You're going to bow to something. So Israel says, let's make a golden calf for ourselves. And the Bible says they took off their rings, their necklaces, all their gold, all their jewelry, and poured it into this melting pot. And Aaron crafts for them this golden calf that they worship. And I remember reading that, and I thought to myself, where on earth did they get all that gold? They were slave laborers in Egypt. They weren't gold miners. And then I remember that passage where God said, I'm going to deliver you out of Egypt. And when I do, you're going to take the wealth and the riches of Egypt with you. In other words, I'm going to get you off on the right foot. I call it the Egyptian pension. You're done with this job in Egypt, and you're going with a blessing. And what did they do? Not long after, they took the very blessing God gave them and poured it into a pot and began to worship the blessing above the one who blessed them. And God doesn't want to run the risk of you turning a blessing into an idol. He wants to prepare your heart so you can handle the wealth, you can handle the riches, you can handle the increase, handle the relationships, handle the marriage, handle the children, handle the church position, handle the title, handle the business, handle whatever God has given you. He wants to make sure he's not running the risk of give, giving you an idol when he does so. Amen? He wants, to, he wants to say, man, I trust so-and-so. I trust this one. I trust that one. He doesn't want to just change our stuff. He wants to change us. Yeah, and that will only happen, I promise you. If you hear nothing else this morning, I want you to hear this. That will only happen by and through time and intimacy in the secret place with Jesus, where it's you and him and nobody else. Yes, amen. I'm telling you, church is an amazing introduction where you get to shake hands with God and meet God, but it's, it's going to be behind closed doors where you get to know God yes, yes. in a very real way. Amen. And it's in that place of intimacy where transformation happens. I've often asked myself, I've, I've thought to myself, um, what, Nick, what's the greatest miracle you've ever seen in your life? And as good charismatics and full gospel folks, we, we always jump to People getting out of wheelchairs and cancer being healed and financial miracle. And that's all amazing. That's 100% incredible miracle. And I, I want to push for all those things all the time. But when I look at my own life and I say, what's the greatest miracle I've seen? It's the fact that I can, I can get off work and be frustrated, cold, kind of hard-hearted, despondent, snippy, uh, irritated, negative, and I can just slip away and spend 10 minutes with Jesus, giving him worship, giving him honor, saying, Lord, I, I thank you, I worship you. Change my perspective, clean my heart, make me new. I can just spend a little bit of time with him like that and read some passages and confess the word, and I walk out of that place soft-hearted, optimistic, loving people properly. I've got a newfound perspective a fresh anointing, and I'm able to love the way I'm called to love. That, to me, is an amazing miracle and a marker for the goodness of God in our lives that's available to every single one of us on a daily basis. And I promise if we'll do that, if we'll let Him change us, He'll change our stuff. But we just got to know what's primary and what's secondary. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, when Laura and I go on a trip, we'll pack all our bags, load up the suitcases in the car, take all the time we need to get all that done. And then you know, we were just in Europe for a month, a, a little while back. And, and we sat there in the driveway like we always do. We look at each other and I say to her, okay, I pack this, 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 and that. She looks at me and says, I pack this, 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 and that. And then we ask each other the age old question, are we forgetting anything? In other words, is there something that we don't have right now that we'll need for where we're going? And I believe this is high time at the end of 2019 for us to take inventory of our heart and ask the question, Lord, is there something that I don't have right now that I need for where I'm going? Are there people in my life right now who can't come where I'm going? Are there people that I need in my life who need to be there for where I'm going? 
Are there habits that can't come where I'm going? Are there lifestyle choices that can't come where I'm going? And as we take inventory of our heart, I believe that even this morning, as you bow your head and close your eyes, the Lord will begin to highlight areas of your life where as you close out this year, God will put his finger on an area and say, I want to just alter that. I want to change that. I, it may not even be a bad thing. It could just be a new thing. And God says, I, I'd, like to, I'd like to make something new here. Would you yield to me? Would you allow me into this area? And as we do so, God will position us and prepare us so that when the blessing comes, it doesn't crush us. We're able to steward the resources that God has given us. Lord, I just thank you right now this morning for this church, for these people. That God, they be encouraged and uplifted this morning knowing that you have amazing things in store not just for 2020, but for the years to come. Some of you listening might say, well, how do you know God has a new season for me? How do you know that God has a new thing for me? How do you know? Because the Bible tells me so. The Bible's littered with thousands of promises of good things toward your life, and God did not stop yesterday and say, all right, I've blessed you enough. All right, I've increased you enough. All right, I've helped you enough. You're good now. No, this kingdom's ever-expanding. And believe me and believe God, you're a work in progress. There's more for you. So Lord, we say position us for more. Position us for increase. Draw us into yourself in a mighty way and in a new way. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 God bless you. It's all yours. I'm, I'm on time. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Well, thank you. <clears throat> Praise God. You guys received that? <clears throat> what a powerful, timely word. Amen. Amen. Times and seasons. How many of you are believing next year to move into greater areas to do more, for God to do more? Amen. This, this thing, what Brother Nick is talking about, preparation, uh, isn't this a good word for us today? Very key. Do inventory. Get ready. A lot of times we're looking at where we want to be and God is wanting us to focus on right here, right now. Get prepared first. Amen. And so um, I would encourage you. I hope you got plenty of notes. If you didn't, uh, go on online, watch it again and take notes because I believe that's definitely uh, an awesome word for us today. Amen? Amen. All right. Well, uh, Brother Nick had to leave because he's going up north uh, to minister right away uh, as well. So, uh, uh, but uh, amen. Did an awesome job. He's not here to tell, but amen. So when you watch it later on live stream, Nick, awesome job. Amen. All right. Well, is anybody ready to give? If you are ready to give, you should be. Amen. Uh, and you'd like to have an offering envelope, go ahead and raise your hands. Uh, we're going to take up an uh, offering for our regular tithes and offerings. Amen. And I have a scripture that I wanted to share with you in uh, Genesis chapter 8 or 28, verse 20. It says, Then Jacob made a vow. This is one of my favorite scriptures when it comes to tithing. Uh, Jacob made a vow saying, If God will be with me, and keep me in this way that I am going, and give me bread to eat and clothing to put on, so that I come back to my father's house in peace. Then the Lord shall be my God, and this stone which I have set as a pillar shall be God's house, and of all that you give me, I will surely give a tenth to you." He said, of all that you give me, I will surely give a tenth to you. Amen. And that's something that Wendy and I have done uh, ever since we've been married. Everything that has come into the house, we have vowed to give God uh, a tenth of it. Amen. And uh, so that's, that's a very powerful thing. And it's very exciting where God has brought us. Amen. Uh, since we've started doing that. Amen. Amen. So, uh if you got it, everybody get an offering envelope that wanted one. If you are watching online, you can go to forgivenonline.org, click on our giving tab, and you can give online, amen. If you didn't bring your checkbook and you have a smartphone, you can give right in your seat, amen. 
uh, uh, giving online. Amen. For givingonline.org. And uh, don't forget the power of the penny. This one is actually pretty full, and I've got some pennies that I'm going to be uh, putting in there, but I'm taking mine up north because the one up north is about that full, right around halfway full. And so how many of you know we're wanting to fill both of them and uh, turn that in, sow it into missions. Amen. Amen. All right. We're going to go ahead and watch a video. When you have your offering envelope ready, go ahead and hold it up. The ushers will be by to pick it up. Go ahead, Sue, start the video. Hi! Hi. <laughs> it's us, the Sanders, Hi. Jim and Joina. I'm Joina. <laughs> now, I know you opened the door and you went, uh-oh, it's those nosy uh -oh. neighbors. Nosy neighbors. But we're not no, nosy. We're not. Well, kind of we are. Maybe. <laughs> Here's the deal. A lot of times throughout the years, we've knocked on your door and said, hey, what can we do for you? Yeah. You know? Because that's the type of people we are. You know. But this time, we're going to kind of turn the tables. Lip flop. And ask <laughs> you what you can do for us. Yeah. Hey, oh, hey, 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 hold the phones, hold the phones. You see, we'll just cut to the quick, okay? Yeah. We have no money. We're broke. <laughs> we got nothing. Yeah, zippo zookus. Nada. Bupkis. <laughs> you see, what we've done is we've taken the happy train to credit town. Woo, woo. And we've been having so much fun. We are up woo. to dead in our eyeballs. Over our heads. <laughs> <laughs> so we need your help. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. I know what you're thinking. Mm -hmm. Hey, aren't you believers? And we are. We are. We love the Lord. <laughs> so much. But we've been loving the world. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> you guys have some great stuff out there. Really do. <laughs> At our house is proof. We got so many gizmos and gadgets. Yeah. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and we ain't about to give them up. Nope. Okay. So here's what we've decided to do. Yeah. We have proposed a bailout package for you to help us out with. What do you say? Yeah. Huh? Oh, 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 hey. <laughs> hey, Senator, hold on there, okay? <laughs> <laughs> you see, we need your help because we are scared. Yeah, we're so stressed out. We got creditors nipping at our heels like a duck on a June bug. <laughs> She's got a way with words, and it's so true. Yeah, yeah. It's so oh, true. We're so scared. It, we're like a, a long tail cat in a room full of rocking chairs. <laughs> All right, Juno, that's enough. Okay. See, here's the deal. The Bible says yeah. in the book of Malachi. That's Malachi. Whatever. It says, God says, says, hey, 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 test me with your money. Bring all your tithe into Bring the storehouse. <laughs> and I'll just be honest with you. I failed every test. <laughs> and my storehouse is about to have a pool. <gasps> <laughs> we are so excited, yeah. and we ain't getting rid of that. Nope. So what do you say? Can you help us? Yeah. We've, we've earmarked this rescue yeah. plan. Oh, hey, 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 it's good stuff. It's win-win. It's, win. <laughs> come on. Okay, at least at least just give us some flour. Can we have some flour? Oh, hey, our son's birthday is this weekend. You could just take that flour and make us a whole cake. What do you say, huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a fine howdy-do. I know. <laughs> Well, I guess it's back to the house to do a revision on the rescue plan. Well, we got to hurry. I got a manicure in 30 minutes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Whoa. Mmm. <laughs> Don't you love neighbors like that? <laughs> Amen. All right. Everybody get a chance to give the one and two. Got one right here. Amen. All right, gentlemen. You can bring those on up and let's pray and release our faith. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm excited. I'm excited about this next year. The things we're moving into. I'm very excited about it. So, uh, amen. All right, let's pray. Dear Father, we want to thank you for this awesome opportunity to sow into your work, into your kingdom, into good ground. We thank you, Father, that as we give, that our giving is multiplied back to us 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. And we want to thank you, Father, as Brother Nick had ministered, that you help us prepare our hearts for increase. We do not want money to ruin us. We want to be in a capacity to receive more. And as we give today, we give believing for manifestation of those things. In Jesus' name, we give you all the praise and the glory for it. Amen. All right, gentlemen, you can go ahead and take those on back. Uh, got a couple more things that we need to do. Um, actually, had quite a few things we needed to do. And uh, so, uh, yeah, we're going to do communion. So, uh, Brother Don's trying to wear two hats.